Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session, which is about the CNF Working Group. Um, I'll just make some quick introductions. There are three of us co-chairs, and we're all going to have a little chat with you today. My name is Ian Wells. I work for Cisco. Um, I build CNFs. Um, my uh, co-chair there from Charter is Jeff Salins. He runs CNFs. And Taylor Carpenter is our man in the community who uh, makes sure that they all work on Kubernetes. So what we're going to talk about today is why the CNF exists, how it was started, what we're trying to do, and how we're trying to make the world a better place for those of us who actually need to run CNFs for a living. Um, so a quick intro to the group itself. Um, uh, we were formed um, at uh, KubeCon um, about a year ago at this point. Um, it was a collaboration between a bunch of us. Um, service providers, telcos need to actually run CNFs. Uh, as vendors need to make CNFs. And again, as I say, we need to um, make it so that it's possible to create these things. They're not that easy to create and to consume these things because um, you know, it's easy to get um, into the weeds when you're trying to run complex software. Um, and we're gonna do that by publicizing the best practices that we've learned for uh, both the development and the operation. Um, a CNF, for those of you who aren't quite aware on that, is a cloud native network function. So we're not just looking for containerized, but actually cloud native um, that implements or facilitates network functionality. So it might be moving individual network packets around, or it might be something that supervises or controls or transfers information about where those packets go. Um, so we include uh, actual things like routers, but we also include things like root reflectors, BGP, um, and you know this crosses the board into other um, areas of networking like um, mobile networks. Um, we obviously want to design, at least we want to enable design of those CNFs as microservices, as well-structured applications using the best practices that we already know from the Kubernetes world um, with immutable infrastructure with declarative APIs and of course, repeatable deployment. Um, but we also need to deal with the things where CNFs are a little bit different and special. So our problems basically amount to the difficulty in making these things work. CNFs are hard to develop and operate. And we want to simplify that. We want to make it so that developing a CNF is not something that you, you spend so long trying to figure out how even that works. Uh, we want to make sure that um, you follow the best practices for building CNFs. We don't want you to go and um, fall into the pitfalls that other people have found previously. And we want to make sure that CNFs actually are consistent. So you use them consistently. The, your experiences with one CNF transfer to the next one and the next one. Um, so our goals here are to identify um, the best practices for running CNFs on Kubernetes so that Kubernetes developers and operators can both adopt them. Um, to work out which of those practices allow specifically networking applications to use Kubernetes properly. Um, and um, we also obviously don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we talk to other groups in the CNCF who do related topics that we're interested in, and we take their advice. Um, so we have to remember at the moment, CNFs are relatively in their early phases. It's not that they don't exist, but there aren't all that many out of, there, of them out there. And they're not completely consistent in how you use them and how they behave. So what we want to do here is basically meet people doing this in the state that they're currently in and then walk them forward. So we learn from what they're operating and we take what their experiences are and make them best practices and write them and, and share them with people. Um, and then as we find out new things, we share those as well. And a best practice is not a perfect target. Um, a best practice improves over time as you learn more and more. Um, we work with these four design ideals, portability, flexibility, extensibility, and automatability. Um, and why do we talk about these? Well, to begin with, portability. Um, we're looking for applications that run on Kubernetes, um, but Kubernetes is not one thing. I, uh, what I find in public clouds like AWS and Azure works in one way. What I find in private clouds, whether it's supplied by one of any number of vendors will work in a slightly different way. And there are some things that Kubernetes itself doesn't standardize for you. So uh, as one particular example that we see, if I want a specific kernel module to be loaded, if I'm going to do SCTP as a protocol, as an example, then 
I have no guarantee whether the platform will have that in uh, loaded or not. Just saying it's Kubernetes doesn't decide that on me. Uh, one platform or another might work slightly differently. So we need to figure out how to make portability work so that I can take my CNF and run it in whatever platform the service provider has chosen for whatever purpose, uh, for you know their personal preferred reasons. Um, flexibility and extensibility is about making sure that we're getting the benefits of being a part of the Kubernetes community. We don't want to lock ourselves down to doing things in one precise way forever. As an example, um, Kubernetes obviously does orchestrate containers to an extent. It will run a certain um, set of containers for you and try and keep the count to a certain number. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we then moved on to using Helm to describe that because it made things a little easier. And then because we worked out that it wasn't always suitable, we went and we started writing operators to run specific microservices because sometimes you need orchestration that's more complex but more functional than Helm provides. And that's a perfectly natural evolution. The world moves on and we learn better ways of doing things. We want to be a part of that learning. We want to be able to adopt what comes along. So it's important that we don't end up in a rigid place where we can't change. And finally, automatability. Um, humans are flawed. I think that's a fairly safe thing to say. Um, if you ask them to do something twice or indeed even once follow a set of instructions, they can't always do it the same um, or right. Um, if we look at um, uh, 5G networks where we're trying to build radio access networks, we're actually looking at them orchestrating thousands of applications and thousands of clouds around the network. If we're asking them to hand deploy a thousand clouds, you're going to get a thousand different clouds out of that. It's not going to work. Similarly, if we ask them to hand deploy a thousand applications, then you're going to get a thousand different deployments that don't behave the same. The more we can automate, um, the fewer problems we have and the more consistently everything works, it's so much easier to operate. So making sure that our CMFs are automatable is absolutely key. And now I'm going to hand off to Jeff, who's going to talk about some of the challenges we run into as we're trying to um, do this work. Thank you, Ian. So as you mentioned earlier, I'm Jeff Salins. I work with Charter Communications. Uh, I come from the operator paradigm. And um, you know, one of the main reasons I contribute and am active in the CNF working group is so that I can share my views, but then also try to understand Ian's and Taylor's and like the groups that they represent. So we're gonna walk through a little bit deeper on the challenges through the different paradigms, talk about how those eventually lead use cases and then how those use cases drive the best practices. So first, we're going to take a look at developers. And one of the first questions, you know, that we ask is, do you write CNFs? And if the answer is yes, what challenges are you facing? Some common answers are, you know, what are the defined patterns? Like, what are the best ways to add a second interface into a pod? How do I deliver network services that a consumer actually wants? Um, will the provider of the infrastructure give me what I need? Will my CNF be able to run there? You know, if not, is it okay for me to package my own Kubernetes uh, distribution? How do I innovate? You know, like it's really hard to gain adoption right now because there's so many different views. People want to get out there and prove that they're pushing the bleeding edge and bringing value, but it's sometimes it's tough to show that your way actually is best. Um, and then finally, how do you support your product? It's tough in a multi CNF world that's heterogeneous when the provider is the one controlling the platform and you start to lose, you know, complete control of the different variables that you might have had in a PNF world or physical network function. Next, we look at the operators, you know, operators, do you run a network? You know, do you support CNFs in production and like run critical infrastructure in cloud native environments? If yes, uh, you know, what does life beyond NFE look like? What lessons can we learn? Um, you know, do you get to run your own upstream Kubernetes? This is always a point of contention. Why? Because of that supportability conversation. Can I run a standardized platform throughout my private and public cloud instantiations and expect CNF developers to provide me software that I can run on it? You know, what's wrong with my CNI? Like, why do I have to use a proprietary CNI? And then, you know, ultimately, can I put this into my software apparatus, you know, that I have my other operations and um, applications pushing through? Can I put this into my pipeline? Finally, we have the Kubernetes community itself and specifically the CNF, CNCF community at large. Um, you know, monitoring, logging, Kubernetes itself, service meshes, what haven't we provided to the telco community that they're always coming to us and saying, you know, Kubernetes doesn't quite do what I need it to do. Um, so how do we understand the requests of these CNF developers and these CNF operators? 
you know, why doesn't a sidecar fix what we have going on right now? Why do you need a layer two or a layer three interface in this? So after we've looked at the challenges, then we start to talk about use cases. And why do we care about use cases? Because ultimately, we can't really prescribe best practices unless we know what we're actually trying to accomplish. So we look at, you know, the concept of user stories from our three different paradigms, and then we start to look at building out use cases that will ultimately drive us to, you know, find ways to overcome the challenges that are being listed and drive towards use cases that are, sorry, best practices that we can then publish and start to help define some of those established patterns. So that, you know, starting off at like a more high layer esoteric view of things is a combined user story for like developers and operators. And that's how do I get CNFs into someone's infrastructure and then how do they maintain and run that? So first, you got to get the CNF into the telco's infrastructure. Typically, this is a private cloud, maybe even a hybrid cloud scenario where they're using both public services and, you know, first party services from a cloud infrastructure standpoint. You know, is there a means for them to watch repos and pull them in continuously into their pipelines? Can we treat CNFs like we would other software, despite some of the quirks that they present from a software and management standpoint? Are there feedback loops to present data from our continuous testing back to the CNF developers? Are we being good citizens and giving them the information that we're finding as we're running this? Are there defined requirements? Things like air-gapped installations. Uh, do I have to go to the internet? What if I don't allow internet access from my private data centers? Can I pull in all of this and build from scratch within my own environments? Then you go to the next phase of this, which is lifecycle management. As service providers start to attempt to, you know, move into a cloud native paradigm themselves, that typically includes a GitOps approach to managing your infrastructure. Everything declared, automation from top to bottom, version deployments for all of this stuff underneath. So when I take a CNF, which is both software but also infrastructure, how do I ensure to the CNF developers that I'm going to have the right runtimes, the right kernels, the necessary NICs and physical infrastructure that they want to put an SRV interface into something, et cetera. Conversely, if I'm a CNF developer, how do I ensure that I can handle the constant, you know, upswing of Kubernetes releases? If I have a customer that is agile and is constantly maintaining and updating their infrastructure and versioning, will I be able to keep pace with them? What does that agreement look like? And then finally, how does the CNCF community stitch it all together and help us bridge these worlds? So moving on to a more actual, you know, concrete technical use case, um, we want to start simple. Like as we are looking to build out use cases, we need to have, or sorry, best practices, we need to have use cases that are solvable. And we take a look at something like a bump in the wire firewall. What this is, is just a simple like filter, an ACL, any type of transparent like network device where packets come in. And that is the key thing. We specifically care about a packet for pa a packet by packet consumption model and then how are packets egressing. And so some of the considerations that we have to think about with such a simple use case is we're probably going to need more than one interface, an interface for ingress and an interface for egress, or else we don't actually have a pipe. There's probably a third interface in there for the control plane mechanisms that Ian was referencing. How do I program this transparent firewall to have the right ACLs in place? How do I ensure that it's performing the way I want? How am I collecting metrics on it? So then ultimately we looked at the design ideals and we start pulling apart this use case and figuring out what are the actual best practices. Once again, meeting the user where they're at, what technology exists now, and where do we need to try to push the envelope? Because it's not all trivial, right? Um, everything in Kubernetes, like if you look at the base requirements, it's, you know, layer three reachability between pods, between nodes, et cetera. What if I need a layer two interface, which is at that ethernet layer? Um, doesn't work with packets and it doesn't work with IP addresses. Can we achieve this in Kubernetes? Finally, I want to touch on the, you know, the use case to end all use cases, and that is the 5G packet core and RAN. Um, you can't have a discussion about CNFs without 5G coming up. It's very new, it's very exciting, and it's going to, you know, change the industry. It's also incredibly complex. It is, you know, an application comprised of many applications. And so ultimately, um, we need to figure out how we support people trying to deploy packet core in Kubernetes now but we need to make sure that we don't repeat the past mistakes of the NFE evolution where we virtualized things, but we didn't really design the software to run in a virtualized world. We treated them like appliances and we didn't really get that cloudish type experience that we were ultimately hoping for.
So moving into the final portion of my section, uh, best practices, right? Um, there's a ton of categories that we're looking at. And these categories, you know, they come from the use cases and they drive things for us. So you can see that there's a bunch of them. And, you know, we'll look at a couple specifically right now, such as life cycle and onboarding, because that was one of the use cases we covered, right? How do you make things better for yourself as a CNF developer or a CNF operator? Um, you have declarative APIs, right? Can I write declarations to consume your CNFs? Can CNFs expect that the infrastructure itself is declarative and make requests without potentially breaking, you know, privilege boundaries and things like that? Was the CNF or the infrastructure designed for automation? You know, am I going to get the portability, the compatibility that I need? How do I manage state when I have stateful applications? Next, we look at security. Security itself can be broken off into multiple different subcategories. Um, security is not a unique concern to CNFs. The reason why we do look at it specifically, though, is because CNFs tend to be very greedy when it comes to things like privileges, talking to the kernel, requesting uh, elevated access to the underlying infrastructure that a lot of you know more traditional applications would not. So diving a little bit deeper in the security bucket, we could look at something, say, specifically like least privilege. What are some of the best practices that you know come from the least privilege bucket? And that's things like not running your containers as root if you don't have to. You know, ensuring that like privilege equals false is the default setting that is deployed over and over and over again. If I have something that's privileged, when it's done doing what it needs to do and execution is complete, does it relinquish those privileges? And then finally, am I implementing RBAC through all the different layers of this stack, the platform, the pod, the container, et cetera? So finally, where are we going with best practices? Why are we pulling apart all these use cases and digging into the weeds to figure out what we're trying to accomplish. And that's because there's a lot of new areas to explore and areas that are unique to both CNFs and Kubernetes just because of what the two in, you know, pieces of technology are trying to accomplish. So what is the best way to do multiple interfaces into pods? This is something that's being explored. You know, how do I leverage node labels and the metadata available to me to get the Kubernetes scheduler to put the right workload on the right piece of hardware? without breaking cloud native paradigms and declarative approaches. Can I move packets quickly? You know, is it a microservice if my data plane acceleration is 4 million lines of code? You know, like, are we going to have to rewrite software at some point while still taking advantage of what's available there today? And then finally, at what point have I turned so many knobs that I'm actually starting to diminish the value of cloud native approaches in itself? If I've made something that's so bespoke and, you know, broken all the immutable infrastructure like mantras that are preached, then have I started to like erase the value that I got from going into Kubernetes and taking on cloud native approaches in the first place. And so lastly, the thing that you need to know is how do you get involved? And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Taylor. All right. Thank you, Jeffrey. Let's see. So as of this recording, uh, there's 27 organizations and individuals who um, are actively participating and express interest in the work that we're doing in the CNF working group. Um, if you're a service provider or you're creating network functions, we invite you to join these other organizations and sharing your real world use cases and experiences. You can also add yourself to the interested parties markdown file on the GitHub repo with a pull request. And we see the potential for collaboration across many groups, starting with those in the CNCF community. If you're part of a CNCF or Kubernetes technical advisory group, special interest group or working group, we welcome you to come and help us define the best practices based on your areas of expertise. Also, if your group has created any white papers or reference material that you think is applicable to the goals of our group, please let us know. An example would be the tag securities uh, security white paper, which we're already referencing for things like the least privileged principles that Jeffrey mentioned. Uh, we also want to help uh, your groups. So if you have anything that you think we could help with, please let us know. One instance that we've been working on is the 
cloud native glossary where we're trying to contribute relevant telecom and networking specific terminology. If you are part of the CNCF project community or working on a project specifically, please come and talk with us about um, where your experiences with those projects could help. This could be in use cases, how the technology is used, the best practices that you've learned. We've seen a lot of stuff from projects like Falco and OPA and TUF for the security area. There's also projects in, focused in all the different areas that I think we care about, configuration, deployment, lifecycle. There's Argo and Flux and Harbor. We invite you to come and, and share your experiences and help us with those best practices. And we also wanna mention that we're interested in helping and working with groups outside of the CNCF, like Linux Foundation Networking under the LF umbrella and their Anikit project we've been collaborating with. We're also working with folks from the Etsy plug test where we're working in an experimental track in October, and we've been helping in past events with them. Orange France has a Network of the Future seminar. We'll be talking with folks from there. We'd love to hear from people from the Open Networking Foundation and maybe those working on the OMEC project, Telecom Infrastructure Project, or TIP. So if you're out there in another organization or project and you think there's some ideas you'd like to share, maybe you see some stuff that we're doing that you'd like for us to come talk, please reach out to us. If you do want to contribute within this working group, um, whether that's adding to existing, uh, creating new content, or helping to improve uh, across the board in docs, whether that's spelling, small clarification, adding new references, we'd love to invite you uh, to come in on that. There's a lot of places where you can get started. And we've made it possible to come in in different areas like the GitHub repo itself. We have a discussion board where you can come and add your ideas. If you'd like to join our weekly meetings, you can add a agenda topic to talk about. We're also on Slack and we have a mailing list where you can come and talk about these things. If you want something more permanent so that we can take the content and maybe add it into use cases, we have a Google Drive that's open with content we've been putting in there. We can collaborate in, in documents there if you're prefer Markdown. We also have a HackMD space. There's that GitHub discussions, as I mentioned. You can add issues, put comments and pull requests. We have a lot of places where you can collaborate. If you're interested in actually writing tests around these best practices um, and helping to validate the software, we do have an initi initiative called the CNF Test Suite with a set of tests focus on doing just that. It's, you can check it out on the CNF Test Suite repo. There is a contributor meeting for that on Thursdays. There's also a public Slack channel on CNCF Slack and a mailing list. We recognize there are challenges in the journey of adopting and implementing cloud native best practices. And we'd like to work together to identify what we can do today and what needs improvement? Please join us in improving these things. We hope this presentation has piqued your interest in collaborating with the Cloud Native Network Function Working Group. And thanks in advance for your participation. If you would like a copy of these presentation slides, you can download them off the event page on Sketch. Please stay tuned for the interactive Q&A with Ian, Jeffrey, and myself. See you there.